Well, good evening. It's good to see all of you here. I, I'm hoping that uh, those who haven't joined us uh, have not joined us because of the weather, not for fear of having a little water splashed on their feet tonight. Uh, but I, I'm glad you're here for this special service of worship and discipleship. Uh, one of the things that sometimes we think worship and discipleship are two things we can't do simultaneously, but one of the things that Holy Week teaches us is that the, all the disciplines of the life of faith are all intertwined together. And so tonight we have a service of worship and discipleship. And I'll give some words of instruction uh, when the time comes, but it is good to see all of you here tonight. And uh, um, as we get started in our time of worship together, let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, Lord, as we are steadily now on our way towards Golgotha, towards crucifixion, and beyond the glory of Easter Sunday morning and resurrection, help us, Lord, tonight to pause for just a moment to recognize the way that you humbled yourself for us and the ways, Lord, you call us to be humble servants of you. Lord, tonight in this service, as we worship you, as we, Lord, follow your example in the washing of feet, the taking of communion together, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be present, God, that you will be here in this place with us, stirring in our hearts, challenging us, speaking to us, God, helping us in this holy week, Lord, to do what you call us to do, to be the people you call us to be. Be with us, we pray, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Matthew 26, verses 20 through 29. Now when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. And Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat this is my body. <clears throat> and when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You can remain seated. Just sing this um, prayer chorus with us, would you? my life. Sing it. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. In my song, church. In your church, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In your church, Lord, be glorified today. Beautiful. Hymn number 436, 
comes straight from the psalm. Psalm 51, 7 says, Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Can we stand as we sing this great hymn of the faith? Sing it with me. Lord Jesus, I love This is the Gospel of John, 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, You have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to, to betray him, And that was why he had said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is any messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will, you will be blessed if you do them.
on this Monday, Thursday of Holy Week. As we come to this time, we're about to come to, it's traditional to have a prayer of confession. God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost, beyond our very deserving. Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us a new commandment. He said, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, Jesus said, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In these next few minutes, I'm going to ask you to join me in silent prayer and confession, giving over to God those things that burden your soul, those shortcomings that weigh you down, those regrets that you may carry with you. And in these next few moments, we will confess our sins to God in prayer. And I will close us with a prayer of confession and then words of assurance of Christ's forgiveness. So let's spend this time now, again, turning over to God, our sins, our burdens, and then I will close this. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, for we are sinners. Merciful God, we confess tonight that so often our discipleship has been weak, and we have failed to serve as Jesus served. Forgive us. And we have failed to love one another as Christ has loved us as Jesus does love us. Forgive us. When we have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Christ with our lips and then deny him by our actions, Lord, forgive us. Merciful God, empower us by your Holy Spirit to be steady and true to you in every time and in every trial. And Lord, above all, forgive us where we fail you. For, Lord, we know that we will, even when we don't want to. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. The good news, the gospel, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, and in Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, just a moment, I'll go down and I'm going to wash the deacon's feet who are here on these front rows. And after that, I'll stand up and we'll, you all will be able to stand and come forward. Now, I know, uh, uh, don't feel pressured to come if it's that uncomfortable for you, but, but bear in mind, Peter was very uncomfortable when Christ wanted to wash his feet. And you can offer to these deacons, you can sit on the front pew here, find one who's ready. They're probably not going to beckon you over, but you find them. And sit, and you can offer one foot, or you can offer both. You can take your shoes off and your socks off, or if you need help, they'll help you. And so we will do that here in a moment. And then 
after your feet or your foot is washed, find your way back to your seat and spend those, those times in reflection and solemn contemplation of the way that Christ himself humbled himself to the point of a servant, even to wash his disciples' feet. So we come to this time now, commemorating what Christ has done for us and the washing of our feet.
323. Let's sing that. God stand with us. Let us pray, God, together on our knees. Let us pray, God, together on our knees.
Let's sing this hymn, I Love This. What a, an expression of love to the Lord this is. If you need your book, it's page 80. Stand with us. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, take joy, my King. Tonight, we have obeyed the Lord's command, remembering his death, the supper from his table. We have followed his example, the washing of one another's feet. But do not let it end there. Do not let it leave or stay in this place. But may it go with you into tomorrow, the dark day, the good Friday, to Holy Saturday, the resurrection morning and beyond. May you take the love of Christ and the obedience to his commands evermore with you from this place. Let us pray together. Lord Christ, go with us now, out from this place this evening, in our hearts. And Lord, go with us, giving us the strength to continue in obedience and observance what you have done for us as we do it for others. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 